Hello, welcome back to the studio. Today I've got another sketchbook tour for you. I recently finished this A5 Stillman and Burn Zeta series sketchbook. Um, I carry these smaller sketchbooks around. Um, in a previous video I'd shown a larger sketchbook where I have some more developed studies, but I think that it's also important to show that uh, sometimes I do some rough stuff and some stuff that doesn't really look like my finished work as much, um, and it's important to keep sketching. So this is the sketchbook that I carry around with me all the time. Um, so as previously mentioned, this is a Stillman and Burns Zeta series. I've had quite a few of these, um, and they are a heavyweight mixed media paper. You can see this is fairly thick. Uh, but recently I've been getting a little bit frustrated with how um, they're actually a cellulose paper, so I can't do too much layering without it really messing up the surface of the paper. So I've already got my replacement, um, and in the next, in uh, in my next sketchbook, I'm going to be using this Strathmore uh, mixed media sketchbook, which is a similar size. It's just a little bit smaller, um, but it's made with 100% cotton paper. It's also a smooth finish, so I do prefer smooth paper. Unfortunately, it is a bit of a lighter weight, um, so I'm wondering whether it'll buckle, uh, but I've heard good things, so I'm gonna try this one next. Um, and without further ado, let's get into the sketchbook tour. Thank you. If you're new here, my name is Lee Angold, and on this channel, I share watercolor techniques and tips and some insights into my life as a natural history illustrator. So today I'm going through this sketchbook. So at the very front, I have a sticker by Iraville, um, which I got with her Kickstarter campaign. Um, and then inside, on the inside front page, I've got um, a, just a paste-in. I don't like um, drawing directly on the inside cover, so I use this space to paste in some mementos from previous exhibitions. In here, I've got a, an ink and watercolor sketch of an elm branch with some crustose lichen and um, turkey tail mushrooms growing on it. On the next page, I've sketched my Atlantis watercolor palette. I will link to a blog post down below where I talk about the colors that I selected for this palette. This is my travel studio palette with 25, 20, yeah, 25 watercolors. So on the left I've got um, all of the swatches for that same palette and on the right I've got an urban sketch from Graffiti Market which is a uh, pub, brew pub near me um, and their kitchen. I was trying to get some lighting studies in. On this page I've done some studies for my gourds painting so on the left I've got some thumbnails and on the right I've got some color studies. Here I was just testing out uh, a uh, Indian ink and water water brush that I tried out and some other mixes and here I've got a paste in of some shells that I drew with pit pens and ink. On the left I've then got a pizza oven sketch uh, that I drew while at a restaurant. Um, um, both of these pages I have some sketches of my watercolor tubes, a uh, very loose take on the left and on the right a more detailed one. Um, here I went to a local coffee shop with my younger sibling and I sketched this, uh, this little view. On the left here I went to the St. Lawrence Market in Toronto and I sketched all sorts of different things. Um, and on the right, I've got uh, some people sketches also in Toronto. Here's some more. This is from the TTC. Uh, there was a delay, so I was just sketching people who were also waiting for the train. And then on the same trip to Toronto, I also went to the Royal Winter Fair and I sketched this llama. So originally I was going to do this fairly realistic, but the truth is Llamas are, well, they're basically caricatures of themselves, so it came out sort of cartoony. Uh, so that's. And on the next page, I uh, hear some more sketches from the Royal Winter Fair. Um, these are some goats, 
The one on the right, I really liked the hay, but the face didn't come out quite like I wanted. Then I was sketching some election coverage during the last election, and it was kind of depressing, <laughs> so I stopped. And I also then just pasted in an old uh, graphite sketch of a hot pepper, and this on the uh, right is an elderberry finish illustration that I'm not going to sell, um, that was done for a commercial commission for a jam label. So I just pasted that in again over some election coverage sketch. So over here I've got a graphite sketch from a uh, Urban Sketchers trip to a brewery and then on the right I've got, um, I've been testing some watercolors from Otto Kano. I'll link to her channel down below. Um, beautiful, beautiful watercolors. Then I also did some cafe sketching of people. Um, this was another Urban Sketchers trip to a church that's closing um, and I really wanted to get the glow through the stained glass windows so I really focused on that and tried to get some of the shadows built up. I'm pretty happy with uh, some of the lighting study in this sketch. Um, then I had got some uh, glass nib pens to use with watercolor so I was just testing that out. You can see the text you can get some really fine lines with watercolor by using a glass nib pen and just it keeps on dispensing so it's a little less finicky than dry brushing. Um, and then on the right I had more of the same but I didn't want to have two pages of text so I pasted in a little gingerbread cookie illustration that I'd done uh, a couple years back for a greeting card. Here is some uh, cattail sketches from uh, my first video. Uh, I will link that up in the cards. And then over here I have, uh, I went to a local bakery for breakfast one morning and I did a really rough, messy sketch. And then uh, this was from an Urban Sketchers workshop where I was just doodling while the instructor explain. Those are some people sketches. Over here I've got uh, the first time that I tried to make watercolors. I was um, testing out uh, my watercolors and also comparing them to some similar watercolors. Here are just some random swatches of paints from my collection. Uh, I was reading about convergent evolution, ichthyosaurs, and bottlenose dolphins, which are very, very different evolutionarily, but they um, fit the same niche, so they've developed to have very similar looking skeletons. So uh, here I was just doodling from internet reference a bottlenose dolphin and an ichthyosaur. And then I also uh, tested out some um, blue watercolor paints around them. Then over here on the left, I've got a um, elephant foot again from internet reference. Uh, and uh, this is a prehistoric fish, which I sketched at the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto at the ROM. And here are some more sketches from the ROM. So uh, this is a red squirrel from a taxidermy mount. So here I've got a sketch of a Pachycephalosaurus, which is a late Cretaceous dinosaur. While I was in the dinosaur exhibit sketching this dinosaur, several toddlers came by who clearly knew a lot more about dinosaurs than I did, which was rather amusing. Over here I have uh, some swatches from paint making. Um, and on the next page I've also got some swatches from paint making on the right, and on the left I've got this hot pepper from <clears throat> my uh, complimentary underpainting tutorial I'd done. And I was going to make this into a larger piece, but it didn't really work out. So then I just pasted this into my sketchbook. On this page, I've got some notes that I took about lichen identification. I'm just trying to learn the terminology because my next project is focusing quite heavily on lichen um, and I'm not really familiar with lichen identification or any of those properties. 
Finally, this is a sketch that I did in Uptown Waterloo. Just a quick little doodle before teaching an urban sketching class. And finally, this is the pamphlet for my daily leaf exhibition. I hope that you enjoyed that tour of my everyday sketchbook. Um, so now you can see some of the range of things that I like sketching. Um, I'm curious to know what are your favorite things to sketch, so let me know in the comments below. Um, also, it would really help the channel if you could like, subscribe, and ring the bell if you'd like to see more content like this. Bye-bye, see you next time.